Hi, I'm composer and flutist Nicole Chamberlain, and we're going to talk about working with composers. I'm a composer, but I'm also a flutist. Like I kept that side of my musicianship uh, up as a professional. So I do still work uh, as a hired flutist. I have played in numerous new music ensembles, and uh, I've worked as a composer, as a com commissioned composer. So I hope that I can guide you through and help you see how one side sees things versus the other side. Okay, we're going to be talking mainly from a composer perspective, um, and this is going to be more targeted towards performers, but I think composers can get something out of this as well. Um, you know, as composers, we get a bad rap as being uh, eccentric hermits. And I think the comment I get a lot of the time is that uh, from performers when we meet is that I seem so normal, whatever that means. <laughs> um, and I, I think what they mean is that since I'm an instrumentalist, I can kind of, or a uh, performer, I can kind of see where they're coming from. Um, and I take that uh, moving forward. But as composers, we still have to collaborate with others to make it happen unless you're working with synthesized uh, or electronic music. You still need live humans. And so let's try to navigate the whole collaboration story, whether you're commissioning or, you know, you should be involved with a composer even if you're playing pre-existing music. Um, so some things to think about. Uh, communication is going to be the common thread throughout this conversation <laughs> or this monologue. <laughs> um, being open, honest, what you know, what you don't know, um, that will keep things a little more friendly. Uh, let's talk about contacting uh, a composer. It's important to contact a living composer when you want to commission them, when you want to let them know you're performing their piece. Um, or if you just, you have questions and you need some feedback. Uh, th that's what's so great about a living composer is if there's question or if there's discrepancies uh, amongst recordings or performances, you can just go straight to the source and say, what do you prefer? What is correct? What was in your vision? Uh, and that can be very, very helpful. So when you contact a composer, make sure you let them know uh, that you enjoy their work um, and let them know why you're reaching out. Um, a little caveat, if you're looking to add a composer to your program and the reason is because of their gender or race, that should not be the only reason and we don't like to hear that's the reason. So I get contacted sometimes like, oh, we have a women's composers conference uh, or a women's composers program and since you're a woman we want to put a piece of yours on maybe maybe open with you really love my music <laughs> you think the audience would enjoy it would it be something you'd be interested in to be added onto our women's composers program that's that's the kind of thing i mean i think everybody wants to be included because of their talent not because of their human makeup um, so it's just something to consider is my one little I guess that's my salty response there uh, you know don't put me on your program if you just want me there because I'm a woman hopefully my music has value to you so reaching out to a composer letting them know you enjoy their music should already already grease the wheels a little bit and get a good response because every composer wants to know that their piece has value, their music has value, and that they're being heard. Um, and opening with that is, is going to help uh, lessen some pushback, especially if you're proposing some really wild uh, suggestions or requests. If you have some requests, we've all been there, right? You love a piece of music. You love a composer. You have a program that has a theme or time limitations or a certain instrumentation, and you're trying to get that piece on the program. Well, 
changing instrumentation, making edits to a piece, um, chopping it down, uh, eliminating extended techniques because maybe there's limitations in the ensemble or doing them differently without asking a composer if that's okay. That's, that's actually, all those things are actually illegal. Um, so what you're doing is rearranging a composer's piece and, and you didn't get permission. So arranging permissions still lie with the composer. And I believe there's probably some funny business with the publisher as well that you have to go through. Um, so those are, those are things to consider. And if you tell, like, if you just send a composer, um, a recording and the instrumentation is different, uh, you'll probably get a nasty reply. If you, <laughs> um, at the very least, you'll get one that's like, why would you do that? Please don't do that. I mean, and the reason, the other reason is why someone would be fussy about that is you got to understand that the audience doesn't know that composer didn't make that choice. And so if there's some choices made that a composer wouldn't do, you're misrepresenting the composer. Um, and so it's kind of like if someone used your headshot or your photos without your permission for a campaign or movement or anything that you did not agree with. Um, it's the same idea. But you should let a composer know if, you, if you're going to perform a piece of theirs. I like to know if it's nearby and I can go, I will go. Um, or if I might be in town, I will go. Um, so just because it's been performed or premiered doesn't mean a composer wouldn't be interested. Some of the higher up composers that are super busy may not be able to go, but there's, I mean, it's still lovely to hear that someone's playing your music and it's having a life. Um, the other thing is send a, a program to that composer so they can submit it to their performance royalties organization like ASCAP or BMI or what have you and uh, hopefully get that reported so they can get a little royalties um, at the end of, of, of everything that they can get paid out by their uh, performance organization um, to give them a little money. And so that's helpful as well. So if you want to support your composers, buy their piece legally. Do not borrow copies from a friend. Like, go buy it. Um and let them know your, their music is being performed and commission them. Those are the three ways you can help a composer uh, financially, even if you're not actually physically giving them money. Also know they are not making a lot of money if their music is published by someone else. So for example, a publisher actually can take from 80 to 90% of the sales. So a composer makes very little if they have a publisher. There is, I think Sheet Music Plus does 50%, but that's pretty rare. It's usually pretty high that the publisher takes a cut. So just be considerate of that um, and, and, and recognize the composer is getting very little. If they self-publish, then it's 100%. And that's nice. And that's another video. So sometimes maybe you have uh, sent an email or contacted a composer and you've gotten a salty response. So sometimes a salty response may be the consequence of a perceived lack of respect for the composer's music. That can be, uh, you know, what we talked about earlier, uh, rearranging their music, disregarding articulations, dynamics, uh, cutting pieces of the music to make it fit a time. Um, you know, and you just try to shoehorn it into a program and, and I get it. Like I've been there and it's hard to resist the urge not to just cram it in there. Like they'll never know. Um, but they usually find out. So just do the right thing. And, um, and if you want to try to do any of those things, ask the composer. Um, you could also get in trouble with the composer's publisher, which may be a bigger problem because um, bigger publishing houses 
have a bigger legal team or access to a legal team. So just just be aware that's a that's a thing. Um, the other thing is like if you've sent a recording, if you've sent a recording and it's not up to par, um, you may also get a salty response. I understand they're students and maybe it's not going to be the same level as professional. Not everyone will recognize that. Maybe make it clear when you send it to a composer if you're a student. Uh, maybe make it clear if you're an amateur figuring out the new music thing. But if you go to a composer and you say, I'm gonna, I want to perform your piece. I have question about A, B, C, D. Then you send them rehearsal recordings and you get some feedback and it gets better and better. That will, that's above and beyond what most people ever do. Sometimes I never even know pieces get performed and I'm the publisher. Um, that's the other thing is that comp if you buy a piece from a publisher, the composer might not know. The publisher uh, just gets paid and then they'll pay the composer either quarterly or yearly or whatever their contract is. And so a composer may not know who or what performed their piece until maybe like ASCAP comes out with their yearly report, which sometimes can be two or three years behind. Um, so um, get the composer on your team, especially if they're like me, where it's just a one person operation. Um, I can help promote it on social media or on my website or show up or tell my friends or, or, or those kind of things. But communication is just so key. If you're open and honest about things, that would be incredibly helpful and start a new collaboration. Now, if you've done all these things and you sent what you feel is a really good recording and you still get a salty response, oof. I mean, be thankful you didn't collaborate more with that person because that's just a personality flaw. And uh, there's far many other composers that would love to work with you. And if you do all these things and you You'll, you'll just you'll just have a friend for life for from a composer if you're just very involved in their music and promoting it, performing it to the best of uh, your ability, which is hopefully performing everything that's on the page and maybe even more if you have a conversation with the composer. Um, you can get a special unique insight that maybe someone else hasn't in the past. And sometimes, Composers will put recordings on their website because it's the only live recording they have. It's not always what they would hope for, especially if you only see like excerpts. Um, so if you come across with a better recording, oh my God, they will love you forever. Um, so just reach out if you see a discrepancy between the score and the recording on the composer's website. That's even a more reason to like reach out. They may give you some more insight about why things weren't executed they, the way they were. In short, just being honest and open about your intentions and what you don't know will help uh, everyone in the long run. Uh, the fact that you love a composer's music, uh, and honestly, <laughs> you want to do the right thing, a composer will work through with you. Um, we do, I mean, I understand that not everyone knows how to do the thing, and um, if I can look at things if it comes across as like whoa this person just played everything incorrectly what's happening here um, and use it as a teaching moment you can usually get through to a musician now as far as as commissioning again just when you when you commission a composer you are trying to create new music that's suited for you so you need to Communicate and be honest with the composer about why you need the music, what the instrumentation should be, be really honest about your playing abilities, maybe send some recordings of things you performed well, and then just have an open dialogue about, especially if it's a composer that doesn't play your instrument, have an open dialogue about the things that are in your wheelhouse and aren't. So for me, for example, I do a lot of extended techniques, but there's some people like, for example, flutter tonguing isn't something they're comfortable with. And I won't put it in if that's not something you do well or want to investigate doing more of. Um, I want the piece to be performed really well. So I'm not gonna do things to like sabotage your performance. 
Uh, and if you get a piece from a composer and things are just, you, you'll never get it prepared in time for the concert, be honest with that composer and see if there's anything they can do to make a passage of playable for you. Like, and just be really specific. Like this run is difficult because these fingers move this way. Like on flute, for example, if I got something from a composer that was like, I want you to trill from low B to D flat or C sharp, like there's a key in the middle. That's, it's not impossible, but it ain't gonna be good. Um, and so just, just the composer might be unaware, especially if it's not their instrument, or it could be a mistake. Like I've written things where I'm like, all right, B to C sharp trill. And I just didn't take the key into consideration. I just saw B to C, even though that's pretty sneaky. I probably wouldn't do that either. Um, it could be just an honest mistake, an oversight. Um, and that's where collaboration comes in hand. So, you know, if you want to work with a composer, be open, be honest, uh, be aware of how manipulating or performing their music can be perceived as lack of respect or that you didn't care um, or that you did know and it was a violation of something legal. Uh, just, just be just communicate. <laughs> um, if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, if you're playing a piece of mine, I want to know. I'll put it on my website. Um, if it's streamed, I will do my best to be there streamed. If it's in Atlanta, I will try to be my best. I will be, I'll try my best to be in the seat. Uh, that is the biggest payoff for a composer is to hear your music performed well. Um, and that's the key, well. <laughs> so do your best. Don't buy a piece of music that's really hard and then performing at the end of the day and put it out on the internet. I've had that happen too. Um, and then it's just misrepresents everything. Like, ugh. Um, anyway. So if you have questions, let me know. If you're playing my music, let me know. Uh, if you want to commission me, ooh, yes. Let's do it. Let me know. Um, and hopefully this video was helpful and not too meandering. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's, let's avoid those salty composers. Uh, but I do know that performers can be just as salty when their instrument is not studied well either. So it's a two way street. Thank you for uh, listening all the way to the end. I hope uh, you found this video helpful and I hope you will listen to a few of my other videos about composers, composing, performing, 